Hey everybody, Daryl here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Coloric Malice along Mineo and Emoto's route. Now we're in chapter 6, which is the last chapter, but you never know how long these things are going to be and how long the ending or epilogues are going to be, so it could be one video, it could be three, it could be six. Who knows? Let's keep going and see if we can find out. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Ogata and the Collar Dwelling on something unanswerable won't help. So we decided to try and change our perspective and went to visit Psyche. Oh, how long has it been since we checked on him? Psyche? Oh yeah, you know how I was talking about... I suspect everybody, from the very beginning, I was like, I think Psyche and Mochida might be in on this. Either one or both of them has, have got to be part of Adonis. And you're not off the hook just because you've been shot, Psyche. Psyche was breathing lightly in bed with his eyes still closed. He was still in a coma, so we were only allowed to visit him because we were with the police. How long's it been? There are so many things I want to tell you when you wake up. Mineo had been coming to check on his condition every day, but he's not with the police, so why has he been allowed in here? She just said. He felt personally responsible for what happened to Psyche. Psyche, he put his life online to save Kazuki's. Good man. I can't be weak-willed so that I don't let his sacrifices go to waste. As a police officer, I have to stand up and fight, so he would be proud of me. <sighs> I looked to my side and saw Maneo make a fist while looking at Psyche. I was sure he was making a vow to himself to reignite his dedication. Oh, yes. Excuse me, are you two almost finished? Yes, I'm sorry to intrude. Not at all. The damage to his kidney dropped his condition to critical for a while. I heard at reception that a family member donated a kidney. I wanted to greet them. Did they come by to visit him often? Yes, that person came by around noon and was talking to him while looking worried. I see. I wonder if that's anybody we know. We'd have to apologize and show our thanks to Psyche's family sometime. Reluctantly, we both said our goodbyes and left Psyche's room. Oh. December 18th, 11 a.m. Ogata's statement and Adonis' announcement had become an open dispute every time the topic was discussed on the news. Additionally, phone calls of people who agreed with Ogata and Adonis continually came into the SRCPO line. What, are they just calling us to tell them their opinion, that's all? Excuse me. I side with Adonis, so I think you guys should just go ahead and shut down. They say that the police are unjust, and that they don't see why we should exist. Mochido was taking the calls to SRCPO. He laid down the receiver while looking downcast. More and more people are calling who are siding with Ogata and Adonis due to their anger over X-Day. To be honest, I didn't think Ogata's words would influence so many people. Well, I'm sure part of it's because they've seen him earn his innocence. But what Ogata is preaching can be done by anyone. Using their weapons to judge evil themselves. And most of them don't actually do the investigating before the judging, I'm sure. No matter how you try to rationalize it, there's no excuse to go around hurting others. That's right. But as for now, there haven't been any incidents. But you can't deny that there's a strange tension building up after Adonis' announcement. Let's just make sure we stay alert. Yes. December 18th, 1 p.m. Who am I meeting on the roof here? Sakuragawa, maybe? Oh, no, I'm alone. During lunchtime, I was on the roof alone. Ah, they got you addicted to that biting cold, huh? Kobayashi murdered Fuji because he took away Ishiki's dream. Her actions can't be forgiven, but she definitely felt she had valid reasons. If that's the truth behind X-Day, then it wouldn't be likely that I get another order from the caller soon. I've been alone plenty of times, but Adonis never contacted me again. I can't just sit around waiting for a response. I'm scared, but I should try to contact them. I looked around to confirm that I was alone. Then I tried to talk to the caller. The police officer murder case has been solved. I've also discovered that the incidents were a series of proxy murders done for revenge. What are you hoping to get out of making me learn all these things? My body tensed up in preparation for a response from the caller. 
<sighs> I wait, but I didn't hear anything from the caller, let alone a voice. The caller hasn't said anything to me in a while. Could there be some reason that they're not responding, or that they can't respond? Maybe they were too busy to watch over me, or their surveillance system wasn't working. If that was true, then I could do what I want. I have a suspicion, but I'm not going to say it because in case it's true. But even so, I couldn't be too optimistic. That also meant that the chances of me getting this collar off had decreased. What should I do? I still didn't know the reasons why Adonis placed the collar on me. But at this rate, on X day I'll... No, there's no point in dwelling on the negative things I can't control. Mineo also said that he would try and affect whatever was within our reach. I can be depressed once I've done all I can. I left the roof and took a different approach. Darn you, Collar, for not talking back to me. What I can do right now is... get caught up in the investigation. HQ is currently investigating ex-cons and acquitting people since the announcement made by Adonis. Now that it was discovered that they were operating on a nationwide scale, we didn't know just how many people they intended to execute. I didn't know how much had progressed since. I need to talk to someone at HQ to get information on that. But SRCPO rarely gets to interact with upper management. But you have spoken to two people from upper management recently. Uh, I see wrinkles between your eyes, Hoshino. Is something wrong? Oh, Mochida. I was thinking about everything so much that I didn't even notice that Mochida was walking over to me. Oh, are you heading out to lunch? No, I was about to go turn in a report to Investigations HQ. There aren't any potential incidents now, but that doesn't mean there won't be more in the future. I can take this for you. I was just looking for an excuse to go there and talk to somebody. This may be my opportunity. Um, if you're just going to turn in the report, I'll do it for you. Hmm, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure you're exhausted from dealing with the calls. Hmm... Well, I guess there's no follow-ups they need from that info. Sure, if you don't mind. No problem. <sighs> well, that was easy. I took Mochida's report and strolled over to Investigations HQ. Will we see Pretty Megane Man? I knocked on the door and entered. But the office was bustling with people making phone calls or writing on a blown-up map of Japan. They may be marking the map with people who have collars. If I head a little closer, I might be able to see how many people have collars. How are they finding out who has collars anyway? Are people just volunteering to tell them, or are they going around checking for collars? I inconspicuously gravitated toward the map when I felt a tap on my shoulder. Aha! Uh -huh. Just who I wanted to see! Hoshino, is there something you want? You. C Commissioner Minagishi. I straightened my posture immediately and held the report out to him. I've come to turn in the report from the Special Region's Crime Prevention Office, but everyone here seems so busy. Ah, uh, right now we're all trying to decide the number of so-called criminals who have had collars placed on them. Minagishi took the report from me and glanced at me. Is it Mochida usually the one who comes to give me this report? Have you come here today because you're curious about the progress we've made in our investigations? Apparently, Minigishi knew exactly what I was doing here. I apologize for getting nosy. I was out of line. No need to feel ashamed. I've said this to Morioka before, but now more than ever, the police must unite as one. Receiving detailed reports like this allows us to know all available information. Preventing crimes requires us to pay attention to what citizens who live in the affected areas have to tell us. Some people say that SRCPO is basically a dumping ground. But Minagishi thinks of us as a gear that helps move the police force forward. I believe that this is noted in his report, but we've received many calls about the callers in general. I thought that if I could understand the current situation of the investigation, I'd be able to respond to them better. I suppose so. I was planning on relaying the information that we gathered once it had all been collated. To be honest, we still don't know how many people there are across Japan that have had those collars placed on them. Considering how they said they would judge with those collars, it's likely that those collars contain poisons or explosives. <sighs> I know that firsthand. 
It seemed that they hadn't figured out the collar's mechanism yet. If it were poison, it might be some obscure or unknown type of poison. Yes, Adonis has expressed the desire to execute all criminals. So, it's likely that they developed a unique poison for this occasion. Adonis made their announcement when Ogata was on TV. Even during the trial, Ogata's connection to Adonis could not be proven. But, considering the timing and content of the announcement yesterday, doesn't it seem likely that they're connected? If Ogata is one of Adonis' pawns, he'd be dealt with in a similar way to Hanako Kobayashi if he spoke carelessly. That's right. Now that he mentioned it, Adonis just letting Ogata run free was a bit odd. Not if he serves a purpose. The reason Adonis doesn't take action could mean that Ogata is more than a pawn, or an indication that their methods have changed. We're rounding up suspects from this month's cases, but we still have not penetrated Adonis' inner workings. So we don't know where Ogata fits within their organization. Yes. Also, there is still no hard proof that he is related to Adonis. We've been following him since his release, but he hasn't made contact with any suspicious people yet. All we can do now is focus on finding those with collars and taking them into protective custody. This is a nationwide threat, so this process is going to take us a while. If we had someone like Sasazaka assisting us, I'm sure we'd be progressing much quicker. Oh, he's working another angle. <sighs> Are you trying to hint something to me here? I saluted the vexed Minigishi and exited the room. Was that all I really needed? After I left Investigations HQ, I wondered what I could do to help. What I could do was look for people who had the same color I do. But if they're criminals, they wouldn't be living a normal life like I am. It'd be difficult to find people like that. It would be different if I at least had some kind of clue that would help. As Minigishi said, Sasazuka might be able to help out with the search. Since he quit the police force, Sasazuka might think it was troublesome to return. But right now, Sasazuka is the only one that can help with this current situation. I should try asking. Couldn't hurt? Well, only my pride, maybe. December 18th, 8 p.m.? After work, I left the station and headed to the office. Here, get that thick skin up. Huh, you're going home too. Well, I wouldn't call the office home. Should I, she? You're usually so carefree, but you look pretty gloomy today. Did something happen? He always blurts out annoying things. I internally growled and looked around. We were far from the entrance, so fortunately nobody was around. You know the announcement Adonis made while Ogata was on TV yesterday? I think the collar they mentioned is the same as this one. I pointed at my neck over my scarf, and Shiraishi nodded. That's a reasonable deduction. So, if X day happens, then I'm gonna die, along with many others. We arrested Kobayashi, but there wasn't any reaction from the collar. Hmm. I was talking to Minagishi at HQ today, and he said that Sasazuka would probably be able to find all the people with collars. I was planning on going to the office and talking to him about it. Hmm. Knowing you, you're probably serious about it. You never change. Hmm? What exactly do you mean by that? Adana said they judge criminals. You're thinking about saving them over yourself? Of course! Adonis' definition of criminals is too broad. I can't just watch them die. I have to help. Hmm. If there are others out there who've been collared like me, I can't just let them stay that way. There might not be anything I can do. If you want to find people with collars, then you have a pretty good lead. Huh? Right here. Shiraishi smiled inscrutably. Then he points at my neck. Huh? Yeah, if the collars are all fairly similar, it shouldn't be too hard to track them. That means... You really are soft-hearted, aren't you? Huh? You do things ineffectually. You ignore your own plight and worry about others. W what's gotten into you all of a sudden? I'm just saying you and Anemoto are alike. Well, I think you should stay that way. There's no need to change. I'm just a little bit envious. Well, don't be for long. We'll be after you soon enough. Shiraishi? 
Well, good luck. Shiraishi patted me on the shoulder and walked off. That was weird. I stood still as I watched him go. I suddenly gasped and put my hand in my neck. If everyone has the same color as I do, we might be able to take advantage of that. Sasazaka previously said it was made with a highly sophisticated system. Back then, we didn't know how they'd react, so we didn't try to check it too thoroughly. If we ignored all the risks and ran more tests, we might learn more. If it's being remotely controlled, it should transmit some sort of electrical signal. In that case, it might be possible to follow the signals to find other people with collars. I should ask Sasazaka about this. I quickly made my way to the office, while feeling grateful to Shiraishi. Hurry! What? What's Ogata doing on TV again? On the way to the office, I passed by Shinjuku train station. I don't want to see you. Oh, Adonis' announcement the other day. Well, I think the law is too ambiguous. I feel it allows true evil to roam free too often. Well, we feel that Adonis is too ambiguous. Adonis, judging the criminals themselves, may actually save some people. Or I just might get more innocent people killed. The announcement video publicly denounced the crimes of the police officer kidnapped in April. So it stands to reason that the other three missing officers are also criminals awaiting judgment. If they were allowed to run free, the people they hurt would feel like there was no justice. Don't you agree? Murder is too extreme, but in general, I can understand what he's getting at. People who think that he's wrong are are people who haven't ever been hurt in their lives. <laughs> There's truth to what he's saying, but he's literally advocating people being ruled by violence and mob justice. That's insane. A murderer is one thing, but judging evil people is way too vague, and declaring all evil to be worthy of death? That's just too... Opinions are tossed about in the night. Even the people on their phones stuck out to me. <sighs> I did a search for Ogana on my cell phone, and find pockets of the internet that agreed with him. My boss is harassing me at work. He's my boss, so I can't say or do anything. But everyone knows that he's evil. I don't think it's wrong for him to be judged. Oh god, see? I'm being bullied at school. I couldn't tell anyone, and considered suicide. So, doesn't this mean bullies are definitely evil? They've done enough to be called that. They should be judged. They don't deserve to live. People who felt persecuted were expressing support for Ogata's views. Evil exists everywhere. If all people died, life would be better. Some people even felt that Adonis had given them a chance to rid society of evil. This can't be allowed. Unable to tolerate the atmosphere, I sprinted off. Sasasuka, help us! I arrived at the office, and Mineo welcomed me with a worried look. What is it, babe? I was about to call you. It's cold outside. I'll make something warm for you. Thank you. His caring expression looked painful. He must have been worried about me in the collar. Mineo disappeared into the kitchen, so I looked around the room. <sighs> Don't give me that look. Yanagi was looking through a newspaper article about the incidents. Sasazaka was at his own seat, researching something. Excuse me... Um, Sasazaka? <laughs> I came to the office to ask you something about my collar. If we isolate the signal from the collar and track it, won't we be able to locate the whereabouts of other people with collars? Sasazaka stopped typing the moment those words left my lips. If it's possible that would work, then I'd like to try it. Hey, what are you saying? I turned around to see that Maneo had rushed in with a troubled look on his face. You heard the voice from that caller. If Adonis thinks what you're doing is disadvantageous for them, they'll kill you. I know that, but... Hoshino, I agree with Enomoto. <laughs> Yanagi quietly spoke as we looked at the collar on my neck. I've personally seen you suffer from the poison in the collar. I can't let you do anything that will risk your life. <sighs> I knew that Mineo and Yanagi both cared deeply for me. Oh, If they just wanted to find Adonis by whatever means necessary, then they wouldn't have stopped me. 
They are prioritizing my life here. I really should be thankful for that. Because I knew that, that just pained me even more. I know that there's danger, but if there's a possibility... No! If there's even a small chance of you dying, then I won't allow it. Mineo experienced Fuji's death, so he knew all too well how it felt to have someone close die. I knew that he would oppose it, but even so... He's even more worried than when we first started to investigate the collar. Back then, we just met, and I didn't know whether I should trust you or not. But now, things are different. <sighs> there's nobody better equipped to handle this than Sasazuka. I think there's good reason to try this now. Jeez, stop pulling this act in front of me, you two. Just get a room. <laughs> this isn't some kind of act. We're being serious here. Serious? You think I'll do anything that would let her die? Well? Ugh. Honestly, yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that you cared. Yanagi, too. Just trying to ensure nobody gets hurt doesn't make it the right call every time. Ugh. Sometimes you have to take a chance. Is it now that time? Why are you so calm? If you take a chance and something happens to her... It's stupid to take risk with no reward. I only gamble when the timing and odds are right. Cat, did you receive any orders from the caller while we were gone? No. So theoretically, they've heard this entire conversation, but they're not saying anything. Therefore, either checking the signal isn't detrimental to them, or the caller surveillance isn't working right now. Hey, don't taunt the perpetrator. We don't know anything on their end. No, I think Takeru's deduction is sound. If they had a problem with this, they would have spoken up a while ago. In fact, they'd have said something the moment we talked about it. <sighs> with the failed bombing of the Metropolitan Office, it's obvious there's some confusion among Adonis. Something could be distracting them right now, and that gives us an opening to research the collar. Really? However, we don't know how deep we can go and still be considered safe. I'll try and stay clear of that line, but there are still risks here. I trust in your skills, Sasazaka. I can't just do nothing and let people become victims on X Day. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die fighting. Seems like the stupid cats made up our mind. So what about you two? Are you still opposed? I don't want to hear her be in any pain. I never ever want to see that, but... She's made up her mind, so this isn't the time to be weak-willed. Are you sure about this, Inamoto? Shouldn't you be asking me, not him? Yes. I know how determined she is better than anyone, as well as what she wants to protect. I don't want to deny her of her fight. That's right, I want to protect you too, Mineo. Not just my little bro. Mineo? Hoshino and Enomoto, you two both really try your best to make sure that you're helping others. You're really alike. Yanagi squinted at us, and then turned to Sasazuka. Sasazuka? Can I ask you to proceed? That was my intent from the start. Dumb cat, sit yourself down. Yes. I'm just totally accepting this now. Not even a little bit resentful about this title I have been given. I sat down on the sofa, and Sasazuka typed out something on his computer. <sighs> right next to him, Maneo watched everything and swallowed hard. It's okay. I'm sure Sasazaka will be able to do this. My entire body was all tensed up, prepared for any emergencies, but... Unexpectedly, Sasazaka's hand stopped. Maybe he'd found something. Or perhaps he'd been stopped by the collar security measures. Uh... I stopped myself from peppering Sasazaka with the numerous questions I had and looked at him. I can follow the data managing the collar, and access the main system. Really? Seeing how Adonis isn't stopping you, could you take over their system? My gut says that wouldn't be impossible, except... Something worrying you. First off, it'll take time to get through their security. However, that means the data that's being protected by all that intense security must be really important. Additionally... Once I take over the system, I can overwrite the collar's data. So, it'd be possible to remove the collars, 
That's what you mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why he looks so angry and annoyed? Mine is always interrupted by Sasaka every time he's about to say something important. But today was different. Ah, role reversal. I've wondered about this for a while. Fuji wasn't the only one kidnapped in April, right? He nods in response to Maneo's words. There were four people in that video, as I have been saying all along. Though it showed them all being shot, Fuji was the only one found at the scene. The other three have not been seen again. The bloodstains meant they weren't killed there. The search for them was ongoing, but they didn't seem to have any real leads. It was prior to the quarantine. There's a chance they're outside Shinjuku now. If we can narrow down the range a little, we could do a search. But because we don't know anything about where they were taken, it was frustrating. Maneo saw me bite my lip, and he looked up, as if he just recalled something. The three of them were criminals in Adonis's eyes. Could it be possible that they'll be publicly executed on X day? Oh, I saw Ogato on a TV program earlier, and he mentioned something like that. They might have collars placed on them, so that implies that they aren't dead yet. Yeah, even if they're alive, they're being imprisoned so they can be used later. If they were wearing the same type of collar, shouldn't it be possible for us to find out where the three of them are? Looks like the idiot Saigo's evolved a bit. I'll be blunt, it's possible. But if they notice us and counterattack, it's over. But we might still be able to save the three cops. They were shown on screen even when Fuji was murdered. They were wearing masks, but they must have heard the gunshots. They must have been fearful, wondering when they would be next. Uh, I don't know, it looked like they pretended to be dead to me. So that makes me think they were cooperating in some fashion. It must have been a living hell. Can we prioritize finding the collars for those three? Uh, how? But, don't you want your collar off as soon as possible? The risk attached to them finding out is the same either way. Yes, but I think they're in a much more serious situation than I am. We can remove my collar once they've all been safely recovered. <laughs> Our system intrusion will be discovered by Adonis sooner or later. They would likely increase security or rework their security entirely. We risk not being able to remove your collar and then knowing we were in the system. I'm honestly afraid. But I'm not the only person who's afraid right now. Fear can't be the sole justification for me being saved first. <sighs> Normal women would hesitate. But you just gotta go and put it like that, huh? You're so brave, it's annoying. <laughs> what? I'm just saying what I'm thinking. Oh, I know. I'm not mad at you or anything. I'm just reaffirming that the woman I love is a badass. That's me, all right. Well, why are you saying that at a time like this? What's a better time to express that than right now? No time like the present. You too, Yanagi? Oh, was Yanagi going to be sweet to me in every route? Darn you, Yanagi! So, what's the call? You decide which to prioritize. Don't mind me for now. Prioritize finding the whereabouts of the three police officers. Wait a second. Can't we do both at the same time? Huh? Whether you look for the three or figure out how to remove the collar, you have to break into the main system, right? Takeru, you do that while I go and try and physically look for the three cops. What is physically looking for I'm going to do? That's not going to help any. You're going to look? How are you going to do that without any leads? I do have a lead. Adana said in their first announcement that they're going to make Shinjuku the starting point of rebirth. So obviously they must have them in prison somewhere here in Shinjuku. Well, that doesn't help at all. We already knew that for one. And Shinjuku is a pretty big place. Your brain seems to be working in overdrive today. Maybe you're using up a lifetime of thinking now. The life of the woman I love is on the line. Of course I'll step up. <sighs> Maneo maintained the serious expression on his face, despite Sasazuka's biting sarcasm. It reassured me to know that he was so focused on helping me. Ah, good to know I'm loved. Shinjuku is still a huge search area. It'll be difficult for you to do it by yourself. As I said. Uh, I'll uh, take care of it with my instinctual tracking ability and guts. That sounds so reliable. Don't get in over your head. Though it won't be much, I'll help out too. 
Huh? Yanagi, you too? Are you sure? You think I'll just abandon you guys? <gasps> <gasps> Mineo and I are moved by Yanagi's kindness. Prioritizing those three is fine, but there's a limit to what I can do while I'm infiltrating Adonis's network. What? Really? Considering who we're up against, yes. Also, Cybercrimes at Investigations HQ is working to locate the target, aren't they? If we need to speed things up, then working with them is going to be the best way. That's true. Minagishi also told me that getting Sasazuka's help would be best. Takeru, you might not like it, but would you mind cooperating with the Investigations HQ for us? Don't try and persuade me with teary eyes. You're gross. Screw you. Sasazuka, I'd like to ask you that too. Can you please help with the investigation? Ugh. Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you, Sasazuka. Takeru, I believed in you. I knew you wouldn't forsake your friends. I know your warm-heartedness more than anyone. Huh, who said I'd do it for free? Alright, how many donuts is this going to cost? Huh? huh? This is a matter of give and take. Did you forget what I said before? What you said before? When Mineo bowed down to him, Sasazuka said that Mineo had to be his hand servant, and that his help cost ten donuts. I think that's what the conditions were. There's going to be a pretty hefty fee. Make sure you have enough money to pay it. Um, could you possibly give me a friendship discount? You need to be my friend first to apply. <laughs> Aww. Come on, he hasn't earned that yet. Eek! He's the devil! Shut up. Stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Yanagi has nothing to contribute. Yanagi had been quietly watching over this exchange, and he suddenly spoke up. Sasazuka, if you're going to cooperate with HQ, you may have to reveal Hoshino's collar. Oh. Uh, won't that get me killed? For the time being, I'll only tell Minigishi. Is that alright with you, dumb cat? Yes. Since they'd cooperate with the police, we couldn't withhold our information. If this information gets back to Adonis, I may be killed immediately. But I believed that this was a good opening, so I took the chance. I'm sure you're worried. No matter what I say, your mind's made up, and it wouldn't make a difference. So instead, I'll respond with action. I'll find those three people with the same collar as you and save them. His words were filled with a powerful determination, so I nodded. Yes. We had all joined force in an attempt to release the people from their collars. Ah, another perfect spot to stop. This has been working out well for me lately, and now we're back to Adonis' side. Hope to see you there or in some of my other ones, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.